Today's video is sponsored by the new Paperlike 2.0, which makes writing or drawing with any Apple Pencil on any iPad feel more like paper. Hey, it's Chris, and here's a shocker. I've been loving my 12.9 inch 2020 iPad Pro. Who would have guessed that? But look, in this video, I wanna share with you guys some of the great pro apps that I have found, at least for, for me, I consider them pro with my workflow uh, and helping me get work done, that I found that have been making my 2020 iPad Pro experience phenomenal. So I've made this video before, uh, like a year ago, and this is kind of a follow-up. That one was really popular, got over 800,000 views, and it's still climbing. I'll link it up down below if you're new around here because it has some great suggestions. But some things have changed. There are new apps that I'm using, and there are some apps that I'm not using anymore. And so I wanna kinda go through all of that. Another thing that's different in this video from the one I did a year ago is that I reached out on Twitter and I said, hey guys, tell me some of your favorite pro apps for the iPad Pro, and even if I don't cover all of them, I'm gonna link some of those up down below so you have a whole list to explore. Now, in the previous version of this video, here's what I said. So what makes an app particularly suited to the iPad Pro? Well, probably some combination of utilizing the Apple Pencil, requiring more processing power, or making great use of the screen. Well, the second gen Apple Pencil with its always charged and never lost magnetic connection is still the best Apple Pencil experience there is. And I still haven't personally come across any app that can push this processor yes, even the A12Z to its limit. And yeah, the 12.9 inch still has the biggest, best screen of any iPad, which is arguably the best for writing and drawing, for multitasking, because you can seriously fit a ton more than you can on the 11 inch, and even for use as an external display for your Mac using Sidecar. Plus, since the last time I made this video, we now have trackpad and mouse support on iPads and has just made a world of difference. It's taken the iPad, which I already loved, just to a whole new level. I loved it before. I was already basically addicted to the iPad, but now it's just, pfft, it's ridiculous. Oh, and that LiDAR scanner, that's new, and I've got an app for that that I'm gonna be talking about later as well. Now, in the last video, I specifically mentioned Procreate for sketching, Darkroom for raw photo editing, Affinity Photo as a Photoshop replacement, and those are all still great. If you're new to the iPad or iPad Pro, go check them out. I'll link all this stuff up down below. But there are some apps that I'm no longer using from the last video. Like, I'm done with Cinemagraph Pro. It just costs too much for doing so little. And while LumaFusion seems to be very pro in some ways, it just lacks several pro features that I need. So I feel like I might as well just use iMovie for editing videos on the iPad at this point. So here's my 2020 iPad Pro's current home screen. And let me just pick out a few of the apps that I depend on day in and day out for my business to tell you guys about. Let's start with the widgets, that's important. I still keep my Shortcuts app on deck to create new workflows, and yes, I still have that AirPods Pro shortcut right at the top for one-tap pairing. Everyone keeps asking me about this calendar widget from other videos, so I might as well just mention it really quickly. It's Calzy, and yeah, it's great to have that on the home screen. And then of course, I've also got the fantastical calendar widget loaded up, and traditionally, I'm really not a big calendar guy, but lately, the team has moved into calendars pretty heavily, and I've just been living inside Fantastical on all platforms because it's so much better than Apple's calendar app. Of course, the drafts widget is a favorite of mine because it lets me jump right in to writing, and I think that's enough of the widget talk. Let's get into the big apps, starting with work apps. PDF Expert is a boring app, that I use all the time is critical, is crucial to my workflow, to running my business. I didn't mention it last time because it's boring, it's a PDF thing, right? But look, the reality is I just used it yesterday for communicating uh, with my tax guy, with my accountant, for signing electronically uh, my tax stuff, sending it off, and use, you know signing contracts like my letter of engagement with our accounting firm. It's used for signing contracts all the time. Now, if we're talking about pro apps, I think we have to mention a VNC. And the one that I like is called Screens for iPad, and it's really simple. It just lets me control my Mac when I'm not at my Mac or around my Mac. So if this crazy self-isolation time ever ends and I'm at the coffee shop again, or I'm traveling on a trip and I need to access something or control something or do something on my Mac, then I like to do that with 
screens, okay? What I like is that it's really secure and it's just, honestly, it's like sitting there in front of your Mac and you can control it with a mouse now. It works really good with the new trackpad support. So it's just a very full featured VNC and I like the design. Something else that's a new app for me since the last video that's really helping me take advantage of the iPad hardware, specifically it's new microphones, podcast quality microphones, is Ferrite Pro. So I did get the Pro version, that's what I've been using, and I've edited some podcasts, some of the Daily Tech After Party episodes on Ferrite Pro, and it's really fun. It's totally different than editing it on the Mac. I love using the Apple Pencil to just uh, highlight some stuff and it deletes. Uh, it's really cool. And then all the settings, uh, I have to give a shout out to Renee Ritchie for putting me onto this in the first place because there's a limiter, so you can get rid of audio peaks really easily, uh, and you can customize the controls. You can even customize what the double tap does on the Apple Pencil. It's just really cool. Both the quality of the iPad mics and the quality of the recording using Ferrite and its settings, they've just been stellar, phenomenal. I've gotten really good feedback from people. I have to mention Filmic Pro here because as you might know, I do do some filming, do do, Chandler would like that, on the iPad Pro, on this one. In fact, I filmed some of the iPad Pro review this year on this iPad Pro, the talking headshot. So I'll link it up down below if you missed it. But Filmic Pro just unlocks the best footage that you can get out of your iOS device, your iPhone or your iPad. And kind of along with that, also Filmic Remote lets me use my nice big iPad screen as a remote to see what I'm filming when I'm filming with an iPhone, which is great. It's a perfect compliment. Now, yes, I did mention Procreate for doing sketches. Love Procreate, but I've been getting kind of into another sketching app called Sketches Pro. Number one, the tools are just great. I like the tools a lot. Uh, I was a graphic design major, so somewhere in, in deep inside, I do have some art skills. I wouldn't call myself like an amazing artist, but I do really like the tools here but I really like the sound effects. They've added some sound effects that if you use in conjunction with the Paperlike, the sponsor of this video, you really start to get this crazy experience of like using a real piece of paper. I just like it for that extra immersion. There's a new app out that's for animation. It's called Loom and it's perfect for the iPad and particularly the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. And it seriously makes animation easy and accessible and doable by anybody. You don't have to be an animator to animate stuff using Loom. It's one of my favorite new apps, honestly. Now, I've extensively covered and given my opinion on GoodNotes and Notability. I made a couple of videos and I'll link them up down below for you to check out. I'll just say I normally end up preferring Notability. It just barely edges out GoodNotes for me but that's definitely a pro app for a lot of people, one of those, so it's something to keep in mind. Now, the pro apps that I use as a content creator might be very different than other types of pro apps and pro jobs and workflows out there. So I just wanna mention a few others that are pretty pro that I wouldn't use, but that other people would, and that would really harness the power of the iPad Pro. One for sure is Morfolio Trace. This is an architecture app, it's a CAD app, and it's also meant to be very accessible. It's kind of like architecture for everyone. One thing that seems cool about it is that you can draw on top of things like PDFs and kind of sketch over that so you don't have to just start from scratch. Another very powerful and professional app that you can use on the iPad Pro is called Shaper 3D. Now it actually describes itself as the world's leading 3D design app for iPad and it says that it has industry leading quality and power. Industry leading quality and power on your iPad. That sounds pretty good. Now let's talk a little bit about AR and AR design more specifically because we have this LiDAR scanner and people are like, what am I gonna do with that? I can't use it for portrait photography even. Apple hasn't unlocked that, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll save that for the iPhone 12, I don't know. But you can use this iPad and I really think this is what the LiDAR is for right now as a maker, as a creator of things because you can create AR scenes and objects right now. So there's Reality Composer from Apple, which will let you create AR objects and place them in augmented reality. And then there's also Adobe's Aero app, which is very immersive and yet pretty user-friendly. You could easily pick this up in a day, half a day, a couple hours, and can create just really cool immersive AR experiences. So this is your chance. If you wanna get in on AR before it's mainstream, you wanna build up a new business or something that's AR related before Apple glasses hit in a couple of years, this is your chance. This is the time and these are some of the tools that you can use. 
specifically with the 2020 iPad Pro. Now, because the iPad Pro has such great speakers and because the 12.9 inch has such a great large screen, I've got Hulu, I've got Disney Plus, I've got YouTube obviously, and some other entertainment apps on here because it's just such a great entertainment experience. Definitely one of my favorite ways to get my Star Wars fix. And even though I mostly prefer gaming on the iPad mini 5 because it's so easy to hold, you can still catch me playing some Fortnite or some endless archery if I wanna relax a little bit more, or even my favorite game ever on iOS, which is Badland Brawl, on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Now, some of the apps that make the iPad Pro worth using and owning and buying, they're not just third-party apps, right? Some of them are just Apple's own apps and experiences. So for instance, when I'm running Sidecar, I love being able to take a screenshot of my Mac screen with my Apple Pencil using that drag up from the corner shortcut and then mark it up with the Apple Pencil and then send it over to my Mac. Because I can easily take a screenshot with my Mac, but then I can't just easily use my Apple Pencil to mark it up and stuff. And I've used this for marking stuff up in videos and stuff in recent weeks. It just works better when I'm using the Mac and the iPad in conjunction in Sidecar. And then you just have things like AirDrop. And if you're doing pro things and you're relying on this for work, AirDrop is just a lifesaver and a time saver. I mean, I'm always swapping files between my iPad Pro and my MacBook Pro or my iPhone Pro and my iPad Pro or my wife's computer, you name it. And then just something as simple as Safari, the web browser. Now that we have an actual desktop class browsing experience for the most part, on the iPad Pro since last year, that in combination with the new trackpad and mouse support, man, it's like a dream come true. If you own an iPad or you're looking to get one soon, then check out today's sponsor, Paperlike, now in the second version, which is an accessory that makes it feel and sound more like you're using real paper when you're working with an Apple Pencil. One of my favorite things about the new Paperlike is that it's much clearer to watch movies or view content through it when you're not writing or drawing. Paperlike actually gives you more control with your Apple Pencil thanks to that paper-like resistance that it offers. And yes, it really makes a difference. Plus, it reduces glare and fingerprints, which who doesn't want that? Paperlike's great for anyone who wants to use apps like Apple Notes or Notability or Procreate or Affinity Photo, among many others. When you place an order, you're gonna get two Paperlike covers plus application accessories, along with free worldwide shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You can place a Paperlike 2.0 order using the link down in the description. All right, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. Like I said, I'm gonna have a list of a bunch of apps from you guys from Twitter listed down below, so check it out. Don't forget to check out the Daily Tech After Party. That's the podcast if you wanna hang out and shoot the breeze about all the new Apple news and what's new with Daily Tech and me. Uh, that's linked up down below. Check out Apple Hype if you're bored every day around 11 a.m. Eastern, so you can scan today's most important Apple stuff in 15 seconds or less. And don't forget, you can check me out on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K in both of those places. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.